This is the review sheet for the Unit 2 test. Super important. If you did it in class, great. If you're doing it at home from scratch, that's fine too. Uh, what we're going to do is dig into this and make sure that this makes sense. First, put your name on it and your class number. Now, let's think about this. I'm going to balance these equations. Think about having half a side, half a side. Whatever's on this side has to match what's on this side, vice versa. There's something missing from here. I'm going to count 10 16 times. Well, according to this side, I'm going to count 10 6 times. So how many more times do I need to count 10 to get to 16? Well, if we're starting at 6 to get up to 16, I'm going to have to count it 10 more times. This 10 and this 6 will equal the missing 16. Okay? Now, I'm going to count by 50. Sorry, there's a little error here. I'm going to count 50 25 times. That's the left half, okay? Something's missing. I'm going to count 50 20 times. I need to count 50 some amount more to get to 25. I have 20. I'm missing a number to get to 25. 20 plus 5 is 25, okay? Sometimes you do have to say it in a certain order. I'm going to count 50 25 times. 50 20 times. 55 times, okay? Here's our true false. 40 times 5. Does that equal 50 times 4? Gosh, those numbers don't look very familiar, but let's take a look. Get rid of the 0 for a second, and we have 4 times 5. Well, that's 20. Put the 0 on the end. 200. Okay. 50 times 4. Get rid of that 0 for a second. 5 times 4 is 20. Put a 0 on the end. Wow, my numbers are the same, so that is true. Now, for part B, I want you to think about how we did this up here. Okay, think about where we're dividing. Okay, this side needs to match this side. I'm going to count 11 16 times. I'm going to count 11 10 times. Okay, I'm going to count 11 16 times. What? No because I already have 16 times 11 and a 16 times 11, which means this side of the equation is 110 more than it should be. That is false. Ah. Okay. Let's fill in these blanks. 20 times 8. Well, what's 2 times 8? 2 times 8 is 16. Place your 0 back on the end. Not too bad. 30 times something is 120. 3 times what is 12? See how I got rid of both of those zeros? 3 times something is 12. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. So 30 times 4 is 120. Okay? Something times 10 is 230. Well, according to our zeros rule, if I take any number times 10, the answer is that number with a zero placed on the end. So my answer must be 23. Because the rule says if you take any number times 10, 23 times 10 is 23 with a 0 on the end. You can check your work just by going through the problem after you've placed your answer. 12 times 16, this one can be a doozy. What is 12? Well, 12 is made up of 10 and 2, right? So, what can we do? 10 times 16 and 2 times 16 and combine them. Well, let's do that. Let's see, can you see that? 10 times 16 is 160. 2 times 16 is 32. Let's add both of those together. Put a little plus sign right there. 0 plus 2, 6 plus 3, 1 plus nothing. My answer is 192. If I'm going fast, slow me down. That's why I'm on YouTube, so that you can control my speed. 100 times something is 600. Well, if I count by 100s, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. How many times did I count 100? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I counted 106 times, and I got 600. That's kind of a, kind of a slow way. It wasn't that slow, but I could go a little faster. Let's get rid of those zeros. 1 times what is 6? 1 times 6 is 6. So 
So 100 times 6 is 600. Another way I can think of it is just my zeros property. Anything times 100 is that number with two zeros on the end. And that's what I did. 100 times 6 is 6 with two hundreds on the end. Two zeros on the end, excuse me. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the difference between a prime and composite number. What's the answer? How do we know a number's prime? Well, if it's prime, it only has, only has two factors. And we know that a uh, composite number uh, has three or more factors. Okay? So, how can I come up with examples? I have to think of some numbers that are prime and some numbers that are uh, composite numbers. So, I'm going to take 17, that's a good number, and I'm going to break that into 1 and 17. Draw my rainbow. Boom! Done! That's all there is for 17. It's prime. However, if I choose a number like, let's say, 12, uh-oh, well, I've got 1, and I have 12, okay, rainbow, I have 2, and I have 6, because 2 times 6 is 12, rainbow, and then I have um, 3 times 4, rainbow, that is a, a composite number, okay? Now, ratio table. This is where it gets off the hook. We're taking numbers times 14. How do I know? Because 1 is 14. If I count one student, they have 14 pens. So if I have two students, I should have twice as many pens. 14 times 2 is 28. Okay? Now, how do I get to 42? We'll have to figure out what, how many more than 2 is going to be 42. It has to be either 3 or 4, because there's a 5 right here. I did 1, 2, I'm missing 3 or 4. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take 28, add 14, because that would be 3, and let's see what happens. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 11 42, <gasps> there it is, 42. So all that I did was add 14 more, so 3 14s equals 42. How do I get 5 14s? Well, if we know 2 is 28, I could take my 42, and add two more. Get 70. Now, is there another way I could do that? Absolutely. I could just take, I'm going to do this over here. I could take 14, and let me see if I can do this in blue so it stands out a little bit more. I could take 14 times 5, and I'd get the same answer. Carry the 2, 5, 6, 7, 70. Still get the same answer, okay? How am I going to get to 8? Well, I could take 14 times 8 and stack it. Or I could take my 70 and add what? 5, 6, 7, 8. I need 3 more 14s. 3 more 14s. So 70 plus 42 should also be my answer. 112. Now, pause, 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 pause. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. Do you see it? 14 and 1, 140, hmm, what did they do? It looks like all they did was add a 0. They took it times 10, because any number times 10 is that number with a 0 added to the end. Okay. Finally, we're going to take it times 11. Well, if 10 is 140, I just need to add one more to it. So I'm going to add 14 again. 4, 5, 1, get 154, and I am done. Like I said, you're allowed to pause this video anytime you would like to take a breather, okay? Now, here we go. 20 times 4 is the area of this rectangle, so the area is what? Well, make it a little easier. Get rid of that 0. 4 times 2 is 8, okay? Got rid of the 0, put the 0 back on, 80. 20 times something is 100. 20 times something is 100. So you could count by 20s. 
20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You could get rid of one zero, make that a two and make that a 10. Two times what is 10? Five. A couple different ways you could think of this one. Five times something is 150. Get rid of that zero. Five times three is 15. Put the zero back on. Five times 30 is 150. Okay? Let's see. Ah! Okay, here's the deal. When you're doing the area over here, it's the area of the entire thing. So it's how tall it is total by how wide it is total. But we're missing some numbers, okay? Five times something is 50. Five times 10 is 50. Five times two is 10. Sorry, that's such a tiny 10. Oh, it's so tiny. Now, 12, where'd that number come from? 10 plus two. That's how tall it is, the whole thing, 12. How wide is it? Five, okay, 12 times five is 60. Now, if you know your math facts, that's not too bad. What else could I do? 50 plus 10, 60. It has to equal. Let's take a look here. Now we're gonna have some fun. 10 times something is 100. We know 10 times 10. Now, if you need to, remind yourself that this is 10, write the 10 down here, okay? 10 times 1 is 10, okay? 3, this is a 3, times this is going to be the area here. How tall is this? Well, it says it right here, so I'm going to rewrite it over here just so I can remember. 10 times 3, 30. Now let's do this little rectangle here. How wide is this? Well, that's 3 because it says so up here. How tall is this? Well, that's a one because it says so right there. Three times one is three. What is my equation gonna look like? Mm. Well, we know that the area of the entire thing is the whole height, which is 10 plus one, 11, times the whole width, 10 plus three, 13, is gonna be the answer. Woo, that's, that could be kind of hard to math out, but do we have to? Not really, we could do 100 plus 30 plus 10 plus 3. What do we get? 143. Now, if you wanted to math it out, we could break up um, 11 into um, 10 and 1 and take both of these numbers times 13. So that would be 10 times 13 equals 130. Uh, 1 times 13 equals 13. If you add them together, what do you get? Oh my goodness, the same answer. It should always work out. And if you have time on a math test, why wouldn't you? Just try it both ways just to make sure you're right. Gosh, you could save yourself a point by just double checking, okay? Oh, here's the tough one. This, is some, this is uses some magic brain power. Jolie says there are three hundreds in 5,329. Michael says there are 53 hundreds in 5,329. Their teacher says they're both right. It should be an exclamation point, I think. They're both right. How can that be so? Explain yourself. Now, I, I like to start by just simply drawing myself a uh, thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones chart. Okay, so I have THTO. I'm going to draw some lines down, make this look beautiful. Oh, that looks so nice. Okay. Now, if I was going to count by ones, how many, how many ones am I going to count to get this number? Oh, my goodness. I'm going to count 5,329 ones to get to that number. What if I wanted to count by tens? Well, I'm going to count 532 tens, and then I'd have nine ones left over. Because 532 times 10, let me see, let me write this out. 532 times 10 is 5,320 plus 9 is 5,329. Okay, let's keep going. What if I wanted to count by hundreds? Well, there's 53 hundreds, two tens, nine ones, 5,329. 
If I count by thousands, I have five thousands, three hundreds, two tens, nine ones. Look, 5,329. So if you count by different units or place values, you can find out that there are three hundreds inside the number if you count this way, or you can say there are 53 hundreds if you start, if you count only by hundreds. That is a tricky, tricky math problem. But I tell you what, start easy, start counting by ones, and then shift your number over. Either way, you're going to get 5,329. Okay? Uh, if you need to, review this video. Review your sheet. Hopefully you have it with you so you can check that test. It's going to be very similar to this. Use your zeros property. Use your um, open arrays. Use your area models. Use your factor rainbows. You have got this, okay? Um, if you have questions, ask a teacher. Ask a friend who's really mathy. Ask a grown-up, okay? Take it easy.